to what extent does your department still pose a threat to young women because of the fact that you're enforcing victimless crimes? This edition of whatever it is you're watching is brought to you by... Ridley Report. Ridley Report. Something, 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 something. Ridley Report. Chief, question for you. Yes. Um, I realize things have gotten better under your administration compared sure. to before, but to what extent does your department still pose a threat to young women because of the fact that you're enforcing victimless crimes? I guess I don't understand what you mean by that. Well, I mean, you would consider yourself kind of under threat if you were going to about to be arrested for a victimless crime, and you would not feel too good about that, I assume. Uh, describe victimless crimes to me. Underage drinking? I know you can't do that one. Right. <laughs> But, uh, you know, uh, uh, drug arrests, marijuana arrests, all those things are victimless. So uh, why are you guys still arresting people for that? Doesn't that put them at risk? Uh, no, it does not. But you know what happened to a guy in the Valley Street Jail the other day? He became paralyzed in there uh, a couple months ago. But Yeah, I'm not aware of that. I mean, I know you guys don't, you probably don't send to Valley Street. But, we don't. Uh, but the jail that you send them to, I mean, can you guarantee their safety at all times? I've had no concerns in my uh, 20 years here with any prisoners or people that we have transported there. Do you guys send them to Boscoen? Or? What's that? To Boscoen, yeah. Okay, all right. Well, I had a friend in Boscoen and I have some concerns about what happened to her. So, uh, <laughs> you know, maybe, maybe you and I are hearing different stories. Sure, oh, it could be, but uh, anybody that we've ever charged with a crime and has gone to the jail and has been brought forward to the court uh, has never made any concerns or complaints to us. Okay. Um, you think they might be afraid to? What's that? You think uh, no. Uh, how uh, is, is the former chief receiving any sort of money at all from the town right now? I really don't know that. You'd have to ask the town administration that. Right? And you've I, been in for what, a year or? Approximately. Uh, no, I mean, since I've been acting chief, um, but um, I guess for sometime in March, so okay. not quite a year yet as a full time chief. So you, you were promoted from within? Yes. Okay. Great. I'm starting to run out of questions. Sure. I appreciate your transparency. Oh, no, not, not everybody problem. answers my questions. <laughs> so. No, ask away. All right. Oh, can't think of any others, but I okay. do appreciate your time, Chief. Sure. There's a philosophical difference, and uh, I thought I'd present it to you. Sure. No All right. Problem. Perfect. You take care. Nice to meet you. I'm Dave Ridley. I don't know oh. if you've already heard of me or not, but uh, I, I have New Hampshire's number two YouTube channel. So. Oh, cool. Great. Well, enjoy your day, and I hope your visit here was pleasant. All right, thanks, Chief. <laughs> Have a good day. Yours was the most pleasant part, actually, except for the beauty of the town, of course. Oh, thanks. Take care. Don't forget the uh, pothole. That would be helpful. I heard about that. I've been told to take a picture of that, right? That would be helpful. <laughs> All right, take care. Yeah, it is really ironic how uh, nice some police chiefs can be, you know, or seem. Oftentimes, it's the, uh, you know, the politicians. Uh, and less powerful bureaucrats that get all uh, uptight and camera uh, stopping in their attempts. Maybe it's the phenomenon of being number two. You know, when you're number one, you can sort of afford to be nice. And when you're number two, you're always uh, like a chihuahua, nervous, bitey. I actually tried to, well, I did, I guess, broadcast this, uh, this interview live for the first time, the interview with the chief live on uh, Porcupine 411, so some of you might have already heard it. Uh, it probably didn't sound that great, uh, and uh, of course there was no video, but uh, it was a precaution. Um, just since I knew I was probably going to be interviewing the chief alone and never talked to him before, didn't know what his uh, reaction would be. I thought it should be recorded live in case anything happened to the camera, but as you can see, it was exactly the opposite of how the situation played out. Do you have a message for the Ron Paul movement? Do you have a product for the New Hampshire Liberty community? Then stop keeping it a secret. Head, head, on over to RidleyReport.com. Email Ridley and purchase an ad. There is no humiliation, 
nor privation Ridley will not endure to ensure your message gets out. Ridley Report dot com